Welcome to this video from In 28 Minutes. Thanks for helping us provide awesome learning experiences to more than 300,000 learners across multiple platforms, Udemy, Safari and Pact. Let's welcome our lead instructor, Rangarao Karanam. In this video, we would be talking about performance. Performance is one of the most important non-functional requirements of an application. Now, everybody knows what performance is, right? So, I go to web page. How much time does it really take to respond and load? That's basically performance, right? The user sees the entire page load up in two seconds or three seconds. Typically, you'd want to load all pages within, let's say, a second. That's basically what performance is all about. The key question with performance always is how do you get better performance out of your system? What are your options? Let's consider a simple example. This is using microservices architecture. I mean, I'm just putting up a few microservices in there, which are talking to a few, which are making use of a few common components. And they are also using a little bit of common infrastructure, naming server, API gateway, centralized logging. Maybe there is something for monitoring and all that kind of fun stuff. Now, how do you improve the performance of a system like this? First thing that you can improve is the basic code of each of these microservices. Let's say microservice one is using Java. What you can ensure is to make sure that you adhere to all the Java best practices. Make sure that you're cre not creating tons of objects. Make sure that you're making the best possible use of Java collections. Make sure that you're using the right data structures, right algorithms. That's your basic coding level. Make sure that each of these microservice one, microservice two, and microservice three is profiled and tuned to the maximum. The second thing is your data stores. Each of these microservices will be having a database that they would be talking to. So they'll all be talking to a variety of databases. Make sure that your databases are tuned for the kinds of queries for the kinds of changes that we are generating through our specific microservices. Make sure that they are proper indexes, make sure they are using a normalized data structure and all that kind of fun stuff. So the second thing is to optimize the database. The third thing you can think about is caching. Whenever we talk about a web application, there might be a lot of things that you can cache. You don't really need to send the static content, CSS, JavaScript, and things like that again and again from the server to the browser. If you're showing a list of states on the screen, you might not need to always fetch it from a database. The microservice one can have a cache built in to directly return that data back. The third important thing is to look at all the caching options that you can have. It might be implementing a cache on your database framework like JP or things like that or it might be using a distributed cache. If there are 10 instances of these microservices, then using a distributed cache would ensure that you are only asking for a specific thing once. And then on, you are retrieving it from a cache. The fourth thing you can do to improve the performance of an application is to build redundancy. Instead of having one instance of microservice one, have 10 instances. Instead of having one instance of microservice two, have three instances. How many instances you have for a specific microservice will depend on the load of that specific microservice. But that's the option to build redundancy into your applications, to build redundancy into your naming servers, API gateways, and centralized locking stuff. Before talking about redundancy, the option that you need to consider before that would be to improve the capacity of each of these systems where the microservices, where the common infrastructure is deployed. So is there a way I can get better CPUs? Is there a way I can increase the memory? So that's another factor that you can consider. Capacity of the system where each of these are deployed. Now, in this microservices architecture, we are actually building stuff in a very modular way. We have different components for doing different things and each of these have individual responsibilities. But if you have a large monolith application and you are trying to improve the performance of it, one of the things you can do is try to make it more modular. 
try and split it up so that you can deploy different components on different servers. Modularity also can be an option when you are trying to improve performance. So until now, we have been looking at the various options that you have to improve performance of an application. We started with talking about improving the code of a specific microservice. Make sure that you are adhering to the best practices of that specific language. Make sure that you are using the best data structures and algorithms. The second option that we talked about was the database. Make sure that the database is tuned and you have enough redundancy built into your databases. Third option that we talked about is build caching wherever you can possibly build. The fourth thing that we talked about was the capacity of the individual systems. To You can get better CPUs, get better CPUs. If you can get better memory or more memory, you can get mem more memory. The fifth thing that we talked about was redundancy. Have multiple instances of microservices. Have multiple instances of the common infrastructure. The last thing that we talked about is more architectural change is to make sure that you are building modular applications. Building modular applications gives you more deployment options and that would help you in improving the performance of the overall enterprise. What are the best practices in terms of building great performance? The most important thing is establish clear performance requirements very early. Don't wait until the end to talk about performance. Your performance requirements should be very clear. How many users? What is the peak load? What is the response time which is expected? All these should be very clear even before you write your first line of code. The second important thing is to make sure that you keep testing it early. So your performance tests should be built in into your scrum. The third important thing is to keep profiling your code. Make sure that you are profiling your code so that you identify improvements and make sure that you are tuning your code regularly. One of the most important things to ensure great performance is to have great visibility. When you have a performance problem, you should be able to find out what is the root cause. You don't really want to optimize everything when there is a performance problem. You would want to find out the fix which gives you the best solution. The fix which gives you the best performance improvement. And you'd want to nail that down first. And that's only possible when you have great visibility into what's going on. What, how much time is it being spent at a microservice? How much time is being spent at a naming server? What is happening within the microservice one? How many queries are getting fired? The more visibility you have into the application, the easier it would be to solve performance issues. In this video, we talked about performance. Performance is basically what we all know. It's how much time a system takes to respond to a user. We looked at what are the various options that are present to improve performance of a system. And at the end, we looked at some of the best practices around performance. In 28 Minutes is providing awesome learning experiences to 300,000 learners across platforms like Udemy, Safari Online and Pact. We have clogged million hours of learning in the last few months. The question is, what do you want to learn next? We are building solutions to help programmers at all levels. You can learn programming with our awesome courses on Java, Python and JavaScript. You can learn full stack development with REST APIs and microservices with a wide range of frameworks like Spring Boot, Node.js, React, Angular and Spring Cloud. We have 200 plus videos to help you start your journey from a programmer to a software architect. We have videos to help you learn frameworks, industry trends, including things like microservices, learn the best practices in architecture, design and code quality. Thanks for watching. Keep learning in 28 minutes.